welcome back to Exploring Whiskeys. I'm Eric. I'm Kevin. And today we're going to go back? To 1792? To 1792? Not the year. No, not the year. The distillery. We don't have that machine to go back there. But the, to the distillery, the Barton 1792 distillery. Thought we were done with them. Well, we kind of were. We went through all the line from 1792, except for the ones we couldn't get, which were the port finish, port finish. funny enough. And the high rye were the two yeah. we, we didn't have access to. And we even did a bonus one of the Chestnut Hill Farms... So is this, uh, this going to be a, a, a mash of the port and the high rye? That's my thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what my thoughts are. So we, we're covering the two that we didn't get to, to try with the Thomas S. Moore bourbon finished in port cask. It's not this, a bourbon then. It is not a bourbon. It's it a is whiskey. a finished. It's a finished. So it is a whiskey. It's a finished bourbon. So that makes it a whiskey. This is one. This is brand new. They just came out the end of 2020. So that's the reason why we didn't include it in our 1792 <laughs> lineup because we didn't know about it at the time we were doing the 1792 lineup. Two, uh, this is basically taking the regular 1792 mash, so which is a higher oh, rye right. bourbon mash bill. And then uh, what was the words again? Extended cask finish. finish. Yes, extended cask finish. So we've talked about this a couple of times where... We've had a whiskey, I think the Magnus, Joseph Magnus is one of them, where it's finished in some stuff, but you... But it's only for a short term. Yeah, it's like three to six months or, you know, something along those lines. And it doesn't really have a big impact up to three years. That, I think, is going to have an impact. Sweet. I think I'm there's going to be a lot of sweet, sweet wine notes, port yep. wine notes. At the same time, they've also released a... Uh, Chardonnay finish and a Cabernet Sauvignon finish. Got to keep an eye out. Yeah. Do the complete. You got to got to complete the. There is Trinity. two bottles. I was just there the other day. Uh, grapevine. Really. Has two two different Thomas Moores. Okay. Well, one's. I'm. I gotta think this port is probably the more popular. Yeah, one out of the so. three. Chardonnay. The color there's on another one that does that. Art. Can't think of the name. There there is another bourbon that. That does a Chardonnay finish, and I can't think of the name off the top of my head. But a Cabernet finish? I don't think I've ever heard that. Kind of interesting. Again, it's back to the experimenting. Absolutely. It's got it. You got to do it. Got to do it. That's the, the name of the game anymore. There's just too many options out there. It's like the beer world. Kind of, yeah. First you had your just your domestics, then you had like Sam Adams. Now you've got how many micro oh, brews? Dear Lord. Bourbon, bourbon's the same way now. Yep. Bourbon and whiskey, scotches, they're all experimenting. This bottle was actually a donation. Yeah, compliments of uh, Mr. Adam Morgan. Mr. Adam Morgan threw this bottle over to us, which uh, appreciate we it, very much appreciate. So Thomas S. Moore was actually the founder of the distillery back in the 1889-ish. Ish? I'll go with ish, because I'm not sure. Late 1800s. Let's just yeah, go. Let's just... exactly. Uh, so he's the one that actually founded the Barton 1792 Distillery. And this is totally a line named after him. And that when they released it, they actually released that this is going to be an ongoing experiment okay. line for them. So they're while they did the three with this first pass, they might do extra stuff. Hmm. Each year might be something different. Interested to see where they go with it. I get a 1792 kind of nose but there's a whole lot of extra stuff in there yeah but it still smells familiar like there's a familiar note in there of the slightly higher rye the like all those things that you get from the regular 1792 i enjoyed the 1792 small batch well that's uh, what this that's should the, be that's their og um, yeah you know, we've gone through the, the, the foolproof was not um, either of our favorites it was not sweet wheat was not sweet underwhelming for the hype, twelve year was delicious. Twelve year was really good. Bottle the and single bond. barrel was single pretty barrel. good. The bottle and bond, bond was really good. I get the ethanol off of it, mm -hmm. but other than that, I feel like the nose is kind of just eh, flat. It's a little flat. Again, it's more like nosing just the baseline seventeen ninety two with something a little extra. The small batch. There's more on the nose on that than there is for this one. I want to say there's more. 
of those, uh, like the brown sugars and vanillas yeah. are, are apparent, that's gone in this. I don't get any of that. Mm -mm. I get a little bit of the grain. I get a little bit of the rye note. I get a little bit, maybe, maybe a... I uh, know. The fruit from that port, the, oh, after, totally. the aftertaste is setting in. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah, I'm getting the that aftertaste is very sweet, fruity, the cherry for yes. me. But, yeah, again, nose, eh. Palette is, is good. The, the the finish, the aftertaste is where I pick up all the sweet notes out of this the one. The nose is really, like you said, flat. There's just not much nope. to it. A little bit it of lost. Ooh, a little bit of raisin. Okay. I, yeah. All the things that made 1792, like that nose, that little bit more aggressive rye note, the, but the, still the, the bourbon notes, the brown sugars, the vanillas, the caramels, all that's gone. Yeah, I don't get any of that. That's kind of weird. Especially at the proof. It's not even a strong ethanol nose. Mm -mm. This is, <laughs> wait, 98.9? Adam, we're really sorry if you enjoyed this bottle. But... <laughs> That's straight. It, nothing's coming off on the nose. What do you think? A little water or a little cube? Open more of it up. I'm going to say water. Because I don't necessarily think it needs to be cooled down. No, not cooled necessarily. down. Necessarily. But I would think maybe the water would release the oils a little bit more and get some more. That's, <laughs> that's we're both sitting there trying to get it to do yeah. something more. <laughs> I, I mean, that maybe added a touch more to the of a port to the nose. Yeah, the palate, there's a spice. I get a little bit of raisin. And then once that kind of dissipates, then it just turns to that sweet cherry. And that's pulling from the port. Okay. My order's a little bit different, but similar. <laughs> I get a lot more spice, and it's like almost immediate. There's a sweet, and then it goes right into the rye spice okay. note. Comes through real strong for me, but the finish totally turns into the port impact. Really shows yep. up. Like the fruits, the dark fruits, the dry fruits, sweetness. It, it all turns very, very fruity, but it totally took away the bourbon Mm -hmm. Like the, there's, I get no brown sugars. I get no caramels or vanillas or toffees or creme brulees, all those things that you get from a regular bourbon profile. That's all gone. Yep. It's fruity with spice in the beginning. That's kind of where it comes back to me. That rye effect. The rye really shows up in the front, but mm -hmm. then it just, it does dissipate into that fruity port. It's interesting. That, and that's the, that's the best part. It's an experiment. That's mm -hmm. what they're literally doing this for. They put it into these barrels for a long time, a ruby port. And so this one, the, it, the bourbon itself should have stayed in the... the regular bourbon barrel? Regular barrel for a little longer. And then if it stays in the port for maybe up to three years? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So one, I'm interested to see what the Chardonnay is. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested to see what the Cab is. So I think cab is just something totally different. Like, it's just not something I've seen too many whiskeys. Well, I know, there, like I said, I know there's two at Grapevine. I'll have to go back and see what the other one is. And I'll grab it. It's an interesting experiment. Glad that they're experimenting. I liked the finish. You know, again, we've, we've mentioned. You got three things, and usually not all three are the, great. Mm -mm. I think the finish is the good thing on this. The palette is fine. And the nose is just kind of blah. Mm. blah, blah. I did find it interesting. You got like the horse motif going on, on here and on here, which is really similar to that Chestnut Farms, <laughs> even though they're not claiming the Chestnut Farms. I think that was kind of interesting. Not the cheapest bottle, um, which has to, I think, has to be involved with the fact that they are doing a second barreling and they're for sitting, so on, long. sitting on it for almost three years. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what's adding to the cost and, and, and everything there. But 70 bucks MSRP for this Again, bottle. It's just what, seems I, a little heavy for something that's experimental. To the experimental, it kind of goes back to like the like the old Ingram that's out now. Yeah. The, they didn't experiment. Know, they didn't experiment. They're following now like the Jeffersons. Pay me 80 grand or $80. $80 for the <laughs> bottle. Um, you would just think on something like this, they would it'd be just a little bit cheaper. To draw more people to try it. To try it, yeah. They want to stand out for something. And, I mean, the bottle's totally different than mm -hmm. 1792. 
totally different than anything else that comes out of Barton's. So that's kind of an interesting thing. It actually looks a little ginish. I'm interested to see more where this line goes. Uh, it, I'm just curious what their other ideas are. Yeah. You what other key, things are you going can you finish Cab, in? Port, and Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Yep. What's well, you got to figure there's probably a sherry coming. Mm -hmm. That's that's a pretty normal. So they're going know. they're going the Scotch route now. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, why not? Let's take a let's take a bourbon and see what happens if you finish let's just it. Flip, let's just flip it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you could do some of the like the Asian woods, so the Mezzanora oak mm -hmm. and those kind of things. You could try that. There's a, I mean, I don't know how many options they have. I, I, I really haven't thought through that, but this is like I said before. Time. This is what I said before. I'd love to sit in some of those meetings where ideating. Yeah. All right, this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna, this is our plan for the next like three years. Yes, love to bounce around some of these distilleries to see what their ideas are. The totally. ones that are experimenting. Experimenting. And that's the fun part. So this is 1792, owned by Sazerac, same company that owns Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace has been doing a lot of special finishes, like special wood finish and things like that. So they're starting to play around with some of that. But then you have their other ones that they don't do. No, no, we don't mess with that. <laughs> so no, well, they're at the point now where they've, they don't built, need they've built all those extra barns so they can start pumping out more, which yeah. would be nice. Yeah, they're going to have a lot of juice coming out real soon. Well, not real soon, but soon enough. Soon enough, yeah. Or I say well, well overdue. So you got to think the very few instances that we're able to find it here, any weller. Yeah. And we're two, uh, two and a half hours away. We'll call it frustrating, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. When I saw the, uh, the, the note came out, I saw on the socials the, uh, what, the next foolproof release is coming out soon. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Really glad that I got a bottle of the very first time they released a foolproof. Don't ever expect to see it again. But the foolproof and the CYPB come out at the same time, apparently. So really, really need to find the CYPB. Yes. And the single barrel. Yeah. The orange Once I get those, there. I've got them all. Well, you know, Adam, we appreciate you donating the bottle. Yes, sir. To the show. No, again, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, thinking outside the box a little bit. Yep. You know, again, I know there's one other bottle, and I'll try to get it this weekend. I don't know which one it is, if it's the Chardonnay or if it's the uh, the Cab, but I'll try to track it down. Yeah. Put that on the show here, you know, next couple episodes, see if we can... Well, it's fresh in one's mind. Yeah, keep keep pounding through the 1792 stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, I do enjoy uh, trying the ones that, you know, where they're experimenting. Yeah. So, and I enjoy 1792, especially the small batch, you know, and the... The twelve year yeah. bottle of bond, yeah. you know, foolproof, yeah. not so much. Nope. Love to try the port finish in the high rye. Would at Would. some point. Yeah. Adam, we appreciate you uh, donating the bottle to this cause. Yes, um, sir. And we'll definitely return a favor once we track down one of the other ones. Yes. But we hope you enjoyed enjoyed this review. Uh, as always, if you did, we'd love to love to see you uh, leave a comment for us. We'd also like to see you swipe that like button at the bottom of the screen. While you're down there. If you're new, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we put out a new episode. And yeah, let us know. Have you tried this or any of the other ones? I'd uh, love to hear what your thoughts are. All right. Thanks for joining. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.